Hi, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become more confident quilters from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. So this week we are going to talk about how to move around a quilt when you're quilting it on a domestic sewing machine. So this week for this demonstration, I do have it as a little bit of a smaller quilt, but the concepts I'm gonna show you here are going to translate to any size of quilt. You're gonna be able to follow the same path. So when I do a quilt, I am just gonna go ahead and do an all over on this. So I'm definitely still gonna go ahead and break it down. I'm not gonna just look at it as one. I'm gonna kind of work in sections. And that's going to allow me to have the least amount of quilt underneath of the throat of the machine at any given time. Also, when you're quilting, you're gonna to want to create as big a space as possible so that you don't have a whole bunch hanging over the end. If you're working on a bigger project and you have some folding tables, you can always set one up along the side here or you can set one up in front of your um, quilting machine to extend the space. If you have a really small quilting machine, set it up on your dining room table. Your family can eat out or have a picnic. They don't really need it. It's definitely um, worth it to take up and have that extra space till your quilt out. Otherwise it's gonna get very heavy and it's gonna be very hard to move around. So whenever I'm doing a quilt, cause I'm gonna go ahead and break it down into sections and I'm gonna break it down into probably about four different sections and you wanna start in the middle and then you're gonna work your way up. Um, I'm gonna show you, work your way up to the center. So I'm gonna start in the middle on the outside, work my way to the center and then fill in this section. After that, I'm going to then work you know, kind of rotate the quilt around and fill in the next section, rotate it, fill in the next section, and fill in the last section. And the reason that you do it this way kind of does two things. Um, it breaks it down and keeps the least amount of quilt under the, under the throat. Plus, it also allows you to kind of work from the inside out. If you ever start working on the outside and move yourself in, you're gonna find that you pushed a lot of extra fabric to the inside of the quilt, and you're gonna have a lot of pucks and tuckers and bubbles of things that you're trying um, to deal with. Whereas this way, you're kind of move, keeping that fabric moving to the outside edges. So if there's any extra fabric in the quilt, it's going to move to the outside of the quilt where it's a lot easier to deal with. So for today's project, I'm actually going to do swirls. So I'm just gonna do this nice little um, concentric swirl design all around the quilt. And like I said, I'm just gonna do an all over, but I'm going to uh, map it out and I'm going to quilt it just like I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and now we'll go to the sewing machine and kind of show you how to maneuver and work around the quilt. So as I showed in the video, we broke it down into four sections. So on this one, it's from the center of this flower down here and over here, and that's going to be my first quadrant. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can see if I tried to um, come all the way over here, if I had a big quilt, you can see how this is going to get very messy very quickly. But when we start in the middle, there's a lot less fabric under here that we're dealing with. So you can even do a, a much larger quilt and not be as overwhelmed. Also, I've gone ahead and created as much flat space, scooted my machine over so I have lots of room over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start down at the bottom in the middle. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is pull my thread up. I always like to pull my thread up first. Take my few stitches, turn my machine on. Now take my few stitches. And then I'm just going to um, I just want to get to where I can pull those threads out and get them out of the way. So now I'm just gonna make start making my swirls and I'm gonna work my way up to the center of the quilt.
So as you can see, it wasn't necessarily a straight path to the center, but I worked my way back and forth to the center. So now what I can do is work my way over here and fill in this section and then come back up and fill in the side. Okay, so now that I have this quadrant filled in, then I can go ahead and I don't need to really lift that up, turn it, kind of rearrange um, my fabric, refold it as needed, so that now I only have this quadrant underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way back to the center and then just work my way out and fill in that section the same way. And we are all done. So as you can see by kind of breaking it down into quadrants and turning it around and working through that space, we're able to do a quilt without ever having to worry about putting more than a fourth of that quilt underneath of the throat. So you can definitely do a lot bigger quilts. You don't have to worry about just doing little tiny ones. You can do a lot bigger quilts this way. Um, you may wonder if I do all of my quilts in the same manner and not necessarily. If it's an all over design like this that doesn't really have a set direction, I'm gonna do it this way. If it's one that has more of a linear design, I'm gonna do it in lines. So in sections linearly across the quilt. So, but for all over designs that don't really have a direction, I love to break it down in this way because it just makes it so much easier. So. As always, um, you can definitely follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see all the things that we're working on. We post lots of pictures. And don't forget to subscribe to our videos. Hit the, no the bell so you get notified when we post new ones. And we will see you next week.